So, Michelle, I wanted to ask you a little bit about what we're doing today <laughs> and uh, wanted to find out um, what prompted you to put this together. I've been in the health freedom fight for a long time and I founded the Vaccine Injury Awareness League. So vaccine injury has always been, um, for me, the missing piece in health freedom. It's people just don't acknowledge that vaccine injuries even exist. I'd just like to thank each and every one of you for being here. And I would like to just take a few minutes, I don't wanna um, belabor it or take too long, to really kind of talk about my vision for this. So we started it as the Vaccine Injury Treatment Alliance because many of us know that vaccines are an I iatrogenic, you know, basically treatment that's causing a lot of injury. But we know that this is bigger too. And so this is my wonderful um, old school diagram here and because as I thought about a confluence of factors there is a lot of molecular biology and I have explored I've spent maybe the last five years 20 hours a week exploring this from just about every angle there is I'm for anything that works we can have homeopathy we can have hyperbaric we can have pharmaceuticals because at each place we have to meet people where they're at if their faith is in the allopathic if their faith is in homeopathy but we have to do it with scientifically proven like i was just talking to some homeopaths they said we've done randomized clinical control studies that show that this works and so that's what we want to bring forward to keep people confidence in what we're doing but this is where we can we can do education about the um, children's vaccine schedule. This doesn't have to be anti-vax. I'm just telling you what the vaccines are, what's in them, you know, and things like this so that they understand the, 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 the pros and the cons. You know, uh, my treatment protocols first started in earnest with hyperbarics uh, on my own daughter who was forced into vaccination by actually Creighton University. And um, so there's just a lot of other great things that everybody you know, probably knows about, but um, from a from a world famine standpoint, which we may be on the cusp of, the uh, single greatest species on this planet for human health and wellness is spirulina. So our therapy really was a nutritional approach, um, and um, a nutritional and supplemental approach. It, it did not involve hydroxychloroquine. Did not involve ivermectin. Um, you can read about it in the paper. The whole, the whole uh, protocol was in there. There's more information in here about it. Um, Epsom salt baths were very helpful and are very helpful for long haul COVID. Two cups of Epsom salts in, in, in a tub and have people soak. When they were sick with COVID, I have them do it frequently throughout the day as much as they could stand drawing the water. Sequence of integration is key, right? We have to make sure that what we're doing is in the right sequence because some therapies aren't going to work until nutrient density has been achieved at the cellular level, all right? You try to start doing some of this work on especially some of these injured kids, and you're not gonna get anything because their body can't handle the therapy yet. So that's what, one of the things that we have to problem solve and figure out. 30,000 people now call themselves vaccine injured, and um, they're struggling, and we're super sensitive. We react to everything. We have dysbiosis in common. We have mast cell activation in common. Many are diagnosed with small fiber neuropathy, burning from head to toe, POTS. These women cannot stand up to make dinner, to take care of their children. Their heart rate goes from 30 to 180. You can see it on a pulse ox. When they go from lying down with a pulse ox to standing to walk to the kitchen to do anything for their families. It is, they are in such dire need, you know, and they all came to me with their videos and please show them my convulsions. Please show them what's happened to me. They were never like this before and they know their bodies, this is not anxiety. And this is what they're being told everywhere they go. Their idea of altruism is control, mutilation, and profitability. This is murder for profit. Call this what it is, okay? So now if we can start talking about that, then we can start having honest conversations about what we wanna do about that, all right? So the basic thought process is that is nutrients fast, nutrients fast. What Ted was talking about, 100%. Nutrients fast, hyperbaric. Nutrients fast, hyperbaric. Nutrients fast, hyperbaric. And what are we doing 
every single day. Water, 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 water. Now what you get is integration of therapeutic approach. And when you get integration of therapeutic approach and proper sequence, you create the greatest opportunity for recovery. The rest is between them and God. My goal here is to help patients. That's my only goal. I'm, I don't want any other thing but to help my patients. And I'm seeing lots of patients that have been injured by the COVID vaccines. Here's the hope. God's got this. It was already built into our cellular wisdom how to heal from anything. You just got to give it what it needs to heal.